Hello again. In my video where I talk about how people can get started in reading comic books, I mentioned how important it is for comic book covers to be as eye-catching as possible. And as such, as I was digging through the $1 bin in my local comic book shop, I happened to come upon one very particular little gem. G.I. Jackrabbits number one. While the art of the cover itself is not exactly up to par with industry standards, it does promise us a ridiculous G.I. Joe parody enacted by rabbits and other animals including a walrus wielding a bazooka. Good to know that Walrus from Rocket Raccoon was able to find work after that comic's conclusion. Before we begin the comic, let's take a look at this little note from the publisher, Adam Post. As president of the Excalibur Publications and writer-slash-creator of G.I. Jackrabbits, I can honestly tell you that it is not as easy as it may seem to publish comics. This issue alone has gone through five rewrites and four artists. This guy is the president of this publishing company and the writer of this book and he went through five rewrites? Either this guy is incredibly open to the input of his subordinates and this thing has been fine-tuned into a sheer masterpiece or he had no idea what he wanted to get out of this comic. Also, this book apparently went through four artists and this is the result. Take a good, long look at this beautiful artwork. The caption at the top of the page says that this thing giving a press conference is a Dr. Bullwinker, obviously a Bullwinkle knockoff, so we can only assume that it's a moose, but at first glance, I thought that this was Jack Skellington with antlers. When Dr. Finkelstein said that constructing his reindeer would be exceedingly simple, I didn't think he meant that he was supposed to make the reindeer out of his own bones. Gentle animals, I can save our troubled world. Exactly how troubled can your world be if you live in a society where predator and prey peacefully coexist, and you even have unicorns which I can only assume use magic? By the way, we see the credits for who drew this comic, and I have no idea who to put the blame on for this one. It can't be Frank Galuska, since he's a pretty damn good painter. The only Joe Capo Bianco that I could find in my googling was a tattoo artist, and again, his stuff was pretty good. So I guess that just leaves us with this last name, Dennis Braun, who apparently also drew the cover. I just don't get it. Even if we ignore these other artists and their far superior work, why even bother crediting them in the first place? And it must be pointed out that there are only three credits for the art in this book. I wonder who this fourth artist was who these publishers didn't even consider to credit along with the others. Oh my god, this artwork is atrocious! Well, I can tell you this much, this Jim Lee will never get work as a comic book artist. Anyway, Dr. Bullwinker says that he can save the world with something called the Bullwinker Effect. Little bit of an ego trip on this guy, don't you think? We then cut to our villains poised on the roof of... whatever building this press conference is taking place in. This is Cabra, obviously a stand-in for the terrorist group Cobra, and I have to question why they thought that making the bad guys a bunch of cows was the best thing to do, when they could have just made them, you know, cobras. After all, snakes already have a place in popular consciousness as being conniving and evil, and not to mention, when I hear the word cowbra, it just makes me think of this. But yeah, cowbra attacks in the absolute worst comic book art I've ever seen in my entire life. Again, they had four artists on this comic book, and this is what they decided on. And they make off with Bullwinker. Yeah, but we can't open fire into the crowd. It's Cowbra! And not content with simply being badly drawn, they got the flow of the word balloons all switched around too. Huh. Written by credit, illustrated by credits, no editor credit. The walrus from the cover fires his bazooka at Cowbra, which makes a big FWOOM sound effect, and something gets blown up. I think. They went through the doors! They went through those doors that aren't damaged in any way! What the hell did you fire at again? Calbra escapes after committing a little slapstick, and I had to groan at how this is the only relatively funny thing in this entire comic. Did you see where they went? The, the elevator. elevator! The elevator? Hey, wait a minute! They went to... The, the roof. ROOF! Like an idiot on the roof! <laughs> they make it to the roof, and luckily Cabra is still there, despite having plenty of time to make a clean getaway. And they have a 
really slow fight. Here's a free tip for any aspiring comic artists that are out there. Taking a scene and dividing it up into several panels, and the dialogue and narration boxes too, that suggests a prolonged passage of time. Something that you don't want to do for a fast-paced and frenetic action scene. We'd better pull out, Sarge. They outnumber us six to one. Our real American heroes, ladies and gentlemen, pussing out immediately because they think that six enemies means that they're outnumbered six to one. Despite the last several panels showing Cabra getting their asses handed to them, G.I. Jackrabbit reinforcements show up. The sides are even. Again, we see six Cabras on the roof at the beginning, and as wide a shot as this is, I think we're supposed to infer from this that everyone we see is everyone who's here. Five Jackrabbits show up, and we see them take six Cabras out of commission. Where are these extra Cabras coming from, and why do the Jackrabbits think they need backup if they can take down their enemies as easily as they are? One of the Cabras finally gets the idea that maybe they should take Bullwinker and get to the Chapa, and one of the Jackrabbits throws an exploding carrot at him. Not that the art conveys that, mind you, I only know it's an exploding carrot because the narration has to point that out for me. It should also be noted that this exploding carrot doesn't come close to hitting its target. Why? Because the token female of the group, Scarlett O'Hare, uh, <laughs> apparently panicked and shot the carrot grenade in midair. And that is why women should not be in the military. They just end up panicking and throwing fits and screwing everything up for the men. Yeah, I did a little bit of research, and apparently the publishing company behind this comic is actually branched off from Salsam Publications, which is run by Gary Brodsky. Anyone else surprised? But yeah, Cabro makes off with Bullwinker because Scarlet has ovaries, I guess, and the Jackrabbits reconvene the next day with their superiors. Cabro has captured Dr. Bullwinker! You know, a doctor of the deadliest moose on the face of the earth, Paul Winker! Deadliest moose on earth? What the hell, Michigan, is he doing holding a press conference about how he can save the world? Shouldn't he be in prison? These two generals go on bantering about how Hooker's a good cop. They just do things a little differently. Holy spit! And they proceed to simply talk to the jackrabbits, business as usual, and not as if they just witnessed something horribly filthy. As you know, Camera has just kidnapped Dr. Bullwinker. So? So? Even if we ignore how Bullwinker is apparently the deadliest moose on the planet, you just spent 11 pages trying to save this guy! If you don't care about him, why should we care about reading this comic? The General proceeds to lay out the mission objective on how to retrieve Bullwinker from the Cabra's castle in Tibet. And all I can do is think back to the first page where we plainly see a unicorn present at the press conference. That should imply that other magical creatures exist in this universe, too. Wouldn't it make more sense to call upon their services than these incompetents? I can't stress the importance of this mission enough, so get out there and kick some tail! And they run dramatically at the reader, or at least as dramatically as this art will allow, while shouting their timeless catchphrase, Yo, Jack! Considering how little they actually accomplished, and how little they actually care about this Dr. Bullwinker, I'm surprised that their catchphrase isn't JACK OFF! To be continued. Yeah, spoiler alert, this was the only issue of G.I. Jackrabbits ever published. And thank God for that, because this is just amateurish, unfunny, and ultimately pointless. And I think that the box deserves a little bit of rabbit meat for its dinner. In conclusion, if you want to see a real parody of G.I. Joe's, just watch Homestar Runner's Cheat Commandos. See you later. Those loonies are gonna blow up the ocean. We'll blow up the ocean! Quick, everyone, to the action figure storage vehicle. Cheat Commandos is an elite fighting force sworn to protect the world from the evil forces of Blue Laser. Crush the Cheat Commandos! I just hate you so much! Cheat Commandos! Rock, rock, rock! Rock, are probably battling evil by all our place that's a toys! Weekdays at 4.30.